I hope you're all having a great evening. I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. We're looking here at this unique curve called the cycloid and how we derive the equation of the cycloid. The equation of the cycloid can very well be represented by means of a given point on that curve and by means of parametric equations. If you are looking here at a x and y axis plane, you have a circle which is resting over here and there's a certain point P which is sitting right here on the origin. If this circle were to be rotated and then it's moving in that direction towards the right and I'll just show you a bunch of circles, not too many and just a rough representation. As this circle rotates, this point P moves. As a point P moves, it, if a curve were to be traced based on the location of that point P, a cycloid would develop. The curve would look something like this in a rough representation and then as the circle continues to rotate and move in the direction of right, you develop yet another arch. That right there represents a cycloid curve. It can just keep going on and on. From the portion right here up to right here is called the arch of the cycloid. And you know you're seeing here two complete arches and then part of one. Each of those is an arch. But you can see a point P on the circumference of a circle traces a cycloid curve as that circle rotates and moves in a given direction. How can you develop the equation of this cycloid? And that's what we're looking here at in this video. The curve can be represented by parametric equations which will give you the values of point P on that cycloid. Point P being made of X and Y coordinates. If you can determine the equation for X and the equation for y then you have the equation of the cycloid because this x represents your x value of the p and the y represents your y value of that p of this coordinate pair that is our goal for this video given this representation and not picking any of these specific circles but picking one which could have been somewhere an intermediate between this circle and this circle an intermediate representation of a circle having a given center c and the point P having been found right here. Here's my point P, the point as it's tracing the curve of the cycloid. Here's our center of the circle, and you know here's our circle. Your tracing would be somewhere in this direction of the cycloid as it would develop. When you're looking at this, a certain number of items can be generated. Those items help us derive the parametric equations of the cycloid. When you're looking at this, you have a certain dimension here called R. You know from here to here is your radius. From here to this point is also a radius. So I'm looking at this radius and I'm looking at that radius. I don't need this extra designation over here. I can generate a 90 degree over here. A triangle has been generated. You can, from this point over here, you can generate another right triangle. I'm going to blow things up momentarily for you. I'm just giving you a rough outline of what we have. We have a point here on the origin, we'll call that point O. I have a point over here, which I'll call point A. I have this point right over here, imaginary point here, and I'm calling that point B. You know I have a radius, I have a radius, I have the center of the circle, then I know I have a little angle here of rotation. Now let's blow this part up right over here. What I've generated so far looks something like this, blown up. Here's my center, here's my point P. I have something which is coming off like this, and then something like that, and here. This is my point B, this is my point A, this is my certain angle theta, here's a 90 degree. I have here the origin, as you can see, and then our curve is being traced in this direction, the cycloid curve. I've generated a triangle over here. This is my X prime, that's my Y prime. This right here is my y prime, that's my x prime. And now you're seeing everything. Our first task is to determine the coordinate of that center. This center has a certain coordinate. The center has a certain coordinate x comma y. How can we determine them? Well, if you're going from here, the origin to this point here, what is the distance you've traveled from here, the origin up to this point A? That'll give us our x value of the center. What is this y value? It's going to be the height of this. You know the height of this is your radius. You know this center is going to have a y value which is radius because that represents the radius of that circle. Simple as that. 
Now let's determine the x value of this center. How can we do that? The x value of this center is equal to this dimension here, OA. That x value of this center is equal to the length of this segment OA, but it's also equal to this arc PA. If you take this arc PA and you were to lay it flat, it's equal to OA. And you know what arc PA is going to be equal to? It's going to be arc theta. It's the arc length subtended by this angle theta and by means of these radii you see this right here my arc length right here is equal to r theta which is equal to oa and that represents my x value of this c and that's r theta we have determined the center i don't need to show you this now what we want to do is focus on this the point p which is made of x and y we need to determine what point p x is is point p y is p x is this p y is that we're looking here at this point right here so how do you go about determining that point P X value and the point P Y value? You have to understand the point P is this right here. Its X value is equal to this X prime. Picture it in your mind. The distance from here to here is giving you your X value of this P. The distance from here to here is giving you a Y value of that P and that's exactly what it is. The point P X coordinate is equal to this X prime. The point P Y value is equal to the Y prime. But how can you determine them? It's not hard. Look at this right here. You're looking here at the segment OA. And you're minusing it from this segment PB. And you can see it. You're looking at everything here along the X dimension. This entire length minus this entire length right here will give you the difference, which is X prime. The same analogy will apply to the Y value in terms of the vertical dimension. This Y value over here is equal to this entire segment here, AC. AC and you know what AC really is it's the radius minus this segment here BC and that will give you your Y value Y prime which will be your point PY so we have everything here in terms of the framework to determine our parametric equations PX and PY which will then complete the cycloid derivation process you know what the OA and the PB are they're not hard OA was exactly equal to this arc length right here which I showed you was to be r theta. So when you're looking at px, which is equal to x prime, is equal to oa, which was this arc length. pa, which was the same thing as oa, which was r theta. I showed you earlier this arc length was r theta, theta times the radius, the arc length r theta, minus pb. What's pb? Take this little triangle right here, this triangle, which is this triangle, and blow it out. We're looking at this. That's what we have. And now I'm trying to determine this dimension. And I'll call this dimension PB. What is this dimension? Well, well, sine of this angle theta is equal to opposite side PB over R. Therefore, PB is equal to R sine theta. That's exactly what it is. PB segment is equal to R sine theta. And I've determined it. It's not hard. It has been determined. Now we focus on that point Y values. And they are not hard by any means. When you're looking at the point Y value, you know you're looking at the dimension of this Y prime. It's equal to AC. AC I know is equal to my entire radius. AC is radius minus BC. BC is equal to this right here, my BC. You can use trigonometry easily. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent BC over R. BC is equal to R cosine theta and that's exactly what it is, R cosine theta. We have everything now to complete this entire derivation procedure. You just have to simplify and isolate. When you're looking at this part, point Px, which is your parametric equation number one, you isolate R. You have R into theta minus sine theta. That's your parametric equation for point Px, your x coordinate of your point P, which is lying on the circle in terms of the circumference point which is tracing the cycloid so it is indeed a point on your cycloid your py is equal to you isolate r from here r into 1 minus cosine theta and this right here represents your parametric equations which describes any point on your cycloid therefore your derivation is complete in all instances this angle we're looking at here which defines the rotation of this theta is always equal to an element of all real numbers what is this arch? I told you earlier that this was an arch. It's going here from 0 to 2 pi. Each arch is generated from a complete rotation of a circle, 0 up to 2 pi. Then the next arch 
you're going 0 up to the next 2 pi then 0 up to the next 2 pi and now you can see we have everything completed for you those are the two parametric equations you want to remember and the derivation is complete the purpose here was only this the cycloid derivation and the parametric equations that represent it thank you for watching have a good day